السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I don't know about you, but that was a lot of really awesome talks. And I'm a little dizzy myself. I had all these thoughts that I wanted to share with you, but I'm kind of overwhelmed with what I've heard myself. So first of all, I'd like you to give it up to all of our presenters. Jazakumullahu khairan. And uh, it's very intimidating going after heavyweights like that. Uh, not literally. Okay. So <laughs> um, but I do want to share with you, uh, and, and, and I don't think I'll take that much time. I really honestly don't think I'll take that much time. Um, I do want to share with you some thoughts that I have, some convictions that I have, some things that I have no doubts about in my mind, that I, inshallah ta'ala, I will see them in my near future, and if not, my children will see them in the United States in the very, very near future. We're going to see a new standard for the Muslim community. We're going to see the standard being that our high school graduates, it's not out of the ordinary that our boys and girls have already memorized the Quran by the time they come out of high school. It's, not, it's going to be a new standard. Oh, wait for the takbirs. Hold on. That's just the start. It's going to be a new standard that by the time our youth are in college, that they are fluent and versed in the Arabic language at the very minimum as a second language. And they are already working their way to a third and a fourth language of their choice. So when they speak with each other and they want to kick it with each other, they're kicking it in Arabic. They're kicking it in the language of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al-Fusha. There is no Ammiya. Ammiya dies in America. The dialectical Arabic dies in America and Fusha is born. And doesn't matter if these children are African American or they're Indonesian or they're Pakistani or Bangladeshi, their Arabic is incredible. And by the time they come out of high school and college, they will go on to do their education. And by the way, they haven't just memorized the Quran, they've been studying it their entire life too. And by the time they come out of college, their education in the seerah and in the fundamentals of Islam is rock solid. It is absolutely rock solid. And of course, those of them that are Pakistani are still going to go to med school only. <laughs> and, you know, the vast majority of the Arab kids will still go on to be engineers, inshallah ta'ala, because that's a sunnah, right? <laughs> but as they will go into those professional fields for the sake of Islam, <laughs> as they do, even though they will go into those fields, they will make sure they will make sure that they have a minor in something that actually means something. They will act, at least have a minor, if not a bachelor's, before they go on to higher studies in sociology, in political science, in history, in anthropology. They will study the human sciences, the areas of inquiry that actually influence human thought, because now that they have the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will study how far human studies have gone in understanding ourselves, and they will bring those two worlds together. They will understand what it means to, to, they will understand political science from the Qur'an's point of view. They will understand psychology from the Qur'an's point of view, from the prophetic point of view. They will understand sociology from the prophetic point of view, from the Qur'anic point of view. These will be a renaissance generation. They will be incredibly intelligent people. And the people all over the Muslim world are going to say, one day is going to come. You know how, how we used to say back in generations, where did you go to get your ilm? And people are used to say, I went to Baghdad. And somebody went to Medina. And somebody went to this institution and that institution. People are going to say, I went to Delaware. I went to Dallas. People from all over the world are going to study the ilm of Islam in America. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. And you ask, and I'm saying these things, I'm not making it up. I am absolutely convinced we are on a trajectory. We are heading towards this destination. And this is just from the ilm point of view. I didn't talk about the character of these youth. Because if they've memorized the Quran and they can speak in Arabic, but they don't know what it means to lower their eyes. And they don't know what it means to not be addicted to the next movie that comes out and they have to go watch it. They, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It's empty, it's hollow. So let's talk about what kind of character these people are going to have. 
These are going to be young, young men and women that understand that the use of filthy language, as I said in a previous session, in their culture, the use of filthy language is beneath their intellect. They don't just do it because it's haram. They don't do it because they respect their intellect. They respect the fact that they are dignified human beings. When other people see them, when non-Muslims see them, they want to get their act together and say, how do, we, how do we be like them? Our Muslim girls are going to go to college they're going to go to high schools and colleges and, and whatever profession they go into, whatever area of academics they go into, and other women are going to be like, how come I don't dress like her? Not the other way around. The Muslim girl is not going to look at those barely dressed girls in high school and say, how come my parents don't let me dress like that? The standards are going to change because we are going to become the standard of what it means to be decent human beings, what it means to be role models. This session is about youth searching for role models. I am telling you folks, you're already here. You didn't even realize that you are role models for humanity. You are shuhada ala nas. If you keep hiding behind the idea that I have to find someone that will inspire me and then hopefully I can change. Listen, the greatest inspiration as we've already heard are already here. Omar's great inspiration is his mother and hearing th that story, I'm inspired by my own mother. May Allah protect our parents. You know, I, I still know, I know every time I write a check to something or give a donation to something, you know what comes immediately in my head? Second grade, my dad taking me to Jumu'ah and saying, never be cheap, always give sadaqah. And he wouldn't put the money in the donation box, he'd hand it to me to make sure I go put it there. So it gets in my head that it's important. And to this day, to, he's already retired. I have kids of my own. But whenever I give sadaqah, my dad, his voice comes in, comes in my head. That's a role model. These are our role, we, we already have them. We just haven't looked. We haven't looked. And when this generation comes up, when this generation rises, they're not just gonna build an amazing Muslim community. They're not just gonna build beautiful, elaborate masajid. And it's not enough that these masajid are gonna be filled at Fajr. That's not enough. And it's not enough that these people are going to be entrepreneurs that are going to start all kinds of amazing things. Alternative riba fee free banking. They're going to start. They're going to start, you know, uh, 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 Muslim hospitals and clinics and medical practices and pharmaceutical companies that are not there to pretend to heal people but actually suck them dry economically. They're not going to be there to do that. They're going to create a new medical economy. They're going to create a new financial economy. They're going to make the world a better place, not just for themselves, but for the rest of the world. They're going to save America from itself. That's what they're going to do. They're going to be the pioneers in media. They're going to be the top journalists in America. This is what these people will be. And they're already sitting in this audience. They're already the kids that run around and say, Brother Naman, I saw you on YouTube. That kid, one day I'm going to be getting his autograph. I'm going to be saying, Sir, I am so proud of you. Thank you for winning the Pulitzer Prize in jur journalism. You've made Muslims proud. That's what's going to happen. And we have to think like this. It does not require millions and billions of dollars to do this. All it requires is a mentality. We have to stop thinking defensively. And this is what I want to conclude this talk with. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given one of the most beautiful, I find one of the most beautiful ayat in the Quran on a sense of purpose, on a sense of mission. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي Tell them this is my path. You know, a path always leads to a destination, right? So when the messenger is told to declare to the people, this is my path, it means he's already indicating to the people that this is going somewhere. We're not there yet. You watch. And let me tell you, أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ I call to Allah with eyes open, with clear insight. You know what that means? That he's, got, he's a visionary. Allah has given him a vision for grand things. Allah has given him a vision for great things, you know. And so I, I, I want to leave you with this idea of, you know, defensive versus offense. You know, in sports, what do they say? What's the best uh, defense? Offense. Constantly we're worried Islam is under attack. 
Why do you have polygamy in Islam? Why do you have these violent verses in the Quran? Why do you do this and why do you do that and why do you do the other? You know what? It's time to turn the tables on that conversation. Why do you have no purpose in life? Why don't your youth look like our youth? Why don't your families, why don't your families enjoy the fa harmony that our families enjoy? Why don't you come enjoy the beauty of life that we've come to see? That's, we're going to turn the tables on this. We're going to be the ones asking the questions. Why do you live with injustice and not speak up against it? Why do you not build communities that build strong youth? We're going to be the destruction of the alcohol industry. Not because we're going to pass fatwas that it's haram, Allah already did that for us. But because we're going to expose its evils and the evils it gives birth to. We're going to educate the people about the harm, things that bring them harm. This is not just something that brings the Muslim harm, it brings society harm. And Islam came to save people from harm. Even the non-Muslims. We will be the education. We have to think like that. We have to think like that. You're, you and you're, you're going to be driving with your children, many of you, when this convention is over. You're going to be taking the highway and you're going to see a filthy billboard. You're going to see a billboard for a casino. Or you're going to see a billboard for some beer or something. And you're going to say, hey kids, look over the other. That's haram. Don't look there, okay? Don't look there. But you know what? Your mentality has changed. You're going to say to that kids, you know that thing we're not looking at? Our job one day is to take that down and replace it with something better. That's what we're here to do. Allah brought us here so we can make this a better place. That's what we're going to do. That's what it means to be role models. And you're all going to be. And the last thing I want to share with you guys and I'm done. I'm absolutely, I'm talking to the younger guys, folks here, especially the non-married boys and girls. And I'm calling you boys and girls because you're not acting like men and women yet. Because if you were, I would call you men and women. So I'm calling you boys and girls and I'm hoping by the end of this talk you leave here men and women. Because the young, young boys and girls, the 10 and 11 year olds, look at you in the conference and say, well he looks, he walks like this, like he's got some, you know, deficiency in his leg, so why can't I? My older brother does it. My sister's dressed all weird. Why can't I? You know, she's talking to boys. Why can't I? They look at you are already role models, whether you accept it or not. And you have to take responsibility for how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you text, how you post, how you troll, how you hashtag. You have to take responsibility for that. You have to because you already are role models. When you go on a search for role models next time, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Allah has already put you in a position of leadership. You are Muslims. Allah has already put you in a position of responsibility. You are on the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ So that you all may be witnesses against humanity. It is God's great gift. Allah's great gift that we get to enjoy these treasured words. These words that you cannot put a price on. This La ilaha illallah. This Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. These words have no price. And we have the gift of saying those words out of our mouth. The majority of the people that walk this earth do not have this gift. And so since we have that gift, we are a gifted people. We are an honored people. And Allah gave us this honor so we could be role models to the rest of humanity. May Allah Azza wa Jal recognize, help us recognize our place in the world. And may Allah Azza wa Jal help us realize a future that I described for you and even then some. So we can show this world the beauty of this religion in a way that it's never, ever, ever seen before. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'li wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim.